You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another Audacious Leadership Podcast. Happy New Year, everybody. Absolutely. We're so excited that you could be a part of this today, wherever you're listening or watching. uh, We're just believing for great things, and that is going to be the theme of our conversation today. I'm joined by Pastor Glyn Barrett, my friend and yours, total legend. Um, Is that enough? That's enough, but I mean, can you believe it's 2020? It's crazy. It is this futuristic year that for me as a child, I look back on and thought that in 2020, by 2020, we would have flying cars, hoverboards. Well, yeah, I left my hoverboard just out there. It's just charging. The the Jetsons. You know that cartoon, The Jetsons? And I'm just so disappointed that we just don't have that. But listen, it's it's a new year, which means that um, anything can happen this year. His mercies, the Bible says, are new every morning. So therefore, you should expect 2020 to be different to every other year that you've lived because it's a new day, new opportunities. And I want to encourage you to embrace the opportunities that God brings your way. Absolutely. So we're going to have a conversation today all about this um, new theme this um, word from God really for audacious and I guess for the church which is great exploits so the verse the key verse is in Daniel chapter 11 32 uh, yes thank you for that reminder um tell us about oh tell us the verse what does it say well it's a brilliant verse in the Bible it says those who know their God but those who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits so so the end of the equation is doing great exploits. That's what it's about. That's what the series is about. This is what you're destined and creating by God to do. But there's a key in that. You've got to know God, which results in being strong. Therefore, you do great exploits. It's actually in your DNA. It's who you are. So it's such an important un, uh, thing for us to understand. Yeah, well, we've just spent the last few podcasts actually talking about spiritual disciplines, which I guess is a way to know God, and know more of God and discover more of God. And so now we're actually saying the fruit of that is um, strength and greatness, doing great things for God, allowing God to do great things through you. So um, this is an awesome conversation. Obviously, we're talking to leaders. Um, I'm sure there's many different things that we could say, but I just want to just go over something that you said in this message today. Um, Pastor Glenn, just off stage preaching three times this message this morning, you talked about the meta narrative or the um, the grand narrative. You said this idea of the overarching storyline. So, if you think for a moment, guys, about you know you might be watching a box set or a series. You've got different characters that come and go. You've got your principal character, but there's sort of highs and lows and episodes and seasons. But like the best ones are the ones with these like overarching storylines where things just keep coming back, or the punchline at the end is the thing that you saw at the beginning. Um, and that's what this is about, um, this idea of the meta-narrative or the grand narrative of God. Yeah, I, I think one of the challenges is this is that sometimes when we feel like we're out of our depth, when we feel like we're in new territory, new domain, um, there's a, almost a sense where we're, we're making this up as we go along. I've got to carve my own way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore, we, we can at times end up with negative what-if scenarios being played out in our brain. But when you understand that there is a meta-narrative, that God is the great architect in the sky, that he is the great author of life, and we when we understand that our life fits in, into the meta narrative, then actually it it changes who we are. It actually gives us meaning and context. So the analogy is of you know the church, the new church building that we're building here in Manchester. The idea that builders will come from from far and wide: your carpenters, your plumbers, your electricians, um, your carpet layers, your your, your Decorators. Decorator. I mean, every, like far and wide, and they're going to come and play their own individual parts, but they get meaning, context, and purpose from the meta narrative, which is actually the architect's plans. So they look at the architect's plans, they see what they're meant to do and how that fits in with the overarching grand narrative or grand story of the building that we are building. And so for us, for us as leaders, we will all face challenging times and challenging situations, but you're not here to carve it on your own, your life fits into the narrative of scripture. Your life fits into the meta narrative that God has for humankind. And it's in that that we find meaning, purpose, and identity. 
And that's such an important thing for our faith community to find, to understand that we play a part within that meta-narrative. Okay, so the, the, the big picture, the overarching storyline goes creation, fall, redemption, restoration. Right. And that is, um, that is it. That's the punchline. That's yeah. the, the question and the answer. Well, that's the meta-narrative. That, that's the overarching you know, uh, storyline that we fit into. But we also see those four things being played out in our individual lives. So we all have creation. There was a moment when you were created, you were born, your biological mother or father or somebody was there and, and hopefully they rejoiced in that moment. And we said that, that you know, creation is about shalom, about peace, a sense of fulfillment. And so that happened in your life. But then we also have this personal story of fall we all understand that all have fallen short of God's glory. We've all fallen short. We, we can't reach God's perfect standard. And then we have that, that, that moment of redemption where every single one of us as leaders reached a point where we realized we need a savior and Jesus died for us. Are you kidding? And then the fourth part, restoration, is what we all know that one day Jesus is going to come back. And so it's the meta narrative. But within that, we all find our own part within that as well. We see that being played out in, on a mini scale in all of our lives. I was just going to ask that about you know whether or not it's possible that there's the big story, but then also miniature versions of it. So for example, we're talking to leaders, there'll be a creation, the moment you became a leader or yeah. you got a conviction in your spirit, you were like, I'm going to do something That excitement, that sense of, yes, yeah, yeah. that's great. And then fall, I don't know if that's like maybe where you get it wrong or it doesn't quite work out how you expect or whatever it is. Yeah. Like... What, what's next? What happens? Yeah, well, I, I think in those moments, sometimes we can just throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can give up because we don't feel like we're good enough. But if you hang in there long enough, there comes that moment of redemption where you're able, your skill sets improve, your anointing increases, your, your wisdom, your insight improves, your ability to, um, to uh, lead people gets better. And then you have this moment of restoration where all things are new again and you go to another, go to another level but then you fail again. Okay, yeah. You know, well, that's what again. I was going to ask. And so, so, so we are con continually on that cycle. But what's really important is, is the verse in Scripture that we read that says, but we are not of those who shrink back. And so I think it's really important that wherever you are in, in this, in this mini-meta narrative at work in your life, don't shrink back, don't step back, fight the fight of faith, hold firm, and you'll see this journey being played out in, in your life. So context is really everything. It's everything. You have to know the context in which you suffer or rejoice or whatever. Yeah. The Bible says, guys, in Proverbs, um, says these words, many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose prevails. In other words, the overarching purpose of God prevails. Um, what I like about that verse, Pastor Glynn, is the... Um, the responsibility that lies on man. It says many are the plans of a man's heart because it would be a little bit um, passive for us to say, well, you know, it's God's will, yeah. just whatever happens. But that verse makes it sound like, no, we've got to come up with a plan. Yeah, it's not saying don't make plans. It's saying we've got many, many yeah, plans. Yeah, many. But understand that the meta narrative is this, is God's plan will come to pass, which is brilliant. It, it gives us that sense of, of, of knowing God's in control. God's in charge. It'll be okay. We'll get there in the end. We will have this moment of restoration ultimately. And I, I think there's a great peace and comfort in that. What I think what would be a great question to ask guys as leaders is what is the current plan or the new plan um, in this, at this point of the season to be able to outwork the purpose of God? Um, you know, if you can't have the same plan from a previous season because many of the plans. So what worked before might not necessarily work moving forward. So we've got to know what belonged to the, the past season. That was the um, consecration message that we've talked about in this podcast. What do we need to get rid of? So I guess a great discussion question is like, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan, Stan? <laughs> I love it when the plans come together. Anyway, uh, one other thing I was going to ask you about was um, this idea of the of the family tree, the story thing. You read in your message from Hebrews this idea of following a, a rogues gallery, really, of people who, who got it right and got it wrong and people of, of ill reputation and all sorts, but just this strength that comes from it. You know, whatever, wherever you're at. Do you want to just kind of, can you sum that up in... in a few sentences? I, I can try. Uh, I think it, it's it's really, really important to know who we are and where we come from. And so this this whole idea that we have a spiritual DNA that 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 grafts us into the same family. So we are we are we are descendants as followers of Christ of 
of Abraham. We are descendants of, of, of Isaac and Jacob. They are part of our family tree. That, that's, that's where we get our strength. That, that's where, in the meta-narrative, our individual lives get context, meaning, and purpose. So when you read Hebrews chapter 11, you're reading about your family who did great things. They were ordinary people, but achieved great exploits. And the reason it's so important to understand that you are part of that family in scripture is because sometimes what we do is we take a snapshot of our lives in 2020 and we make the small snapshot of our understanding of our lives, of scientific discovery and theory, of personal experiences and what we do is we superimpose that over the meta narrative of scripture. And so therefore, when we talk about you being a leader of great exploits, some people say, well, that's just not who I am. That I, I, You don't know what happened to me in, in my life. You don't know what circumstances and difficulties I face. I can't achieve great exploits. That's not who I am. But when you understand the meta narrative, when you understand the family of scripture in scripture is your family too, that's where you realize I've got meaning, context, and purpose. I was designed for great exploits. That's what our family do. Our family do great exploits. Our family change the world. Our family start new institutions and charities. Our, our family gets breakthrough. Our family, and even though we suffer, we persecute it, and we, and we go through difficult things at times, we are not of those who shrink back, but we carry on from strength to strength through every circumstance. So leaders, whatever your current reality, be it great or not, there is greatness in you. And the way to um, experience that and to live that is through the knowledge of God. It's a theme through the whole Bible, um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Everything you need for life and godliness has already been given to you right. through the knowledge of him. Yeah. And then, you know, there's practical applications of adding to your faith, this, that, and the other. But um, there's greatness in you. We're going to be having this conversation all through January. Um, you're going to listen to this. And then when you get into your leadership small groups, I just want to encourage you, as we always do, to just bring this idea to life um, by, by talking about it. Um, not everybody is like, you know, wired that way to do loads of talking. I am. Um, but I just want to encourage you to push the boat out when you get to the Leadership Life Group. Um, get stuck into the questions. Um, open up your heart and lift your faith, lift your eyes. Just being around Pastor Glynn in this season of vision um, just, just lifts your heart. We've obviously got two more messages in the series. Do you want to just quickly say what, what, what God is saying? Well, in, in Daniel chapter 11, it says those who know their God. And I, and I think it goes without saying that as leaders, it's really important for us to know God, not, not just based on an historical revelation, but an ongoing revelation, an ongoing journey of knowing God. Because who you know God to be determines what you think he does. If you think God is angry, you'll think that God will act in angry ways. If you think he's vengeful, you'll think he'll act in, in vengeful ways, which is why Jesus said to Peter, who do you say I am? Who do you know me to be? And ultimately he said, I believe you're the son of God. I believe that's who you are. So knowing God is so important. And leaders, I really want to encourage you to, to, to pray, to read your Bible, to do simple things. You don't need to pray long, long winded prayers, but at least pray every day. Leaders, I want to encourage you, read your Bible every day. You know, it's, it's as easy as getting the church devotions every morning. Uh, it can be as, 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 um, as major as reading through the Bible in the year, but r read the Bible because that's where you get to know God. Yeah, this is the spiritual disciplines that we've spent the last couple of months having this conversation about. It's like, let's do something. Let's yeah. change it up. Let's, let's, you know, let's get practical. And so Daniel says, those who know their God will then be strong. And so no longer, speaking of a New Testament verse, are, are we tossed back and forth, you know, like, like in a storm, but there's a strength, there's a resolve that through any circumstance or situation, Paul says, I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstance, whether well-fed, hungry, clothed or naked, whatever it may be, I, I know God. And so there's this strength comes to you simply by knowing God. I mean, it literally is a spiritual gym. Read the Bible, pray, you'll know God, you will be strong. And then it's a mathematical equation. One plus one equals two. Therefore, know God, you'll be strong, and you will do great exploits. So great exploits is the end game, but first call is this. I just want to know God, and I want to encourage you to have a bigger view, a grander view of God than ever. 
a God who's not contained by time, space, or matter. He's outside of time. He has no limitations. He can do all things, and he does all things well. So here we are, the start of the year, full of faith, full of hope, full of vision. And I just want to encourage you to um, to get stuck into this podcast. Go to Leadership Life Group, answer the questions, discuss it, pray together, uh, encourage each other, hold each other to account for the things that you say you're going to do and the way you're going to be and things like that. And um, we're just excited about the testimonies, the stories. Um, you know, people tell stories about great things. Yeah. That's how that's how stories are passed on. Not kind of average, kind of bit of this, bit of that. But when someone does something great, when someone is involved, and I think we all want to be, you know, part of a page in history yeah. and saying, you know, that was our shift, that was our watch. We we did that, um, and all glory to God for it. And and if I can also just say this, that that great exploits. Most people, when they're doing great exploits, don't really realise that they're doing great exploits. Yeah. So I once interviewed a missionary who was involved in planting 1,500 churches in the Congo. And uh, he was an elderly, elderly gentleman, what was in his late 80s or 90s when I interviewed him. And uh, I introduced him, I said, you're a hero. And he said, oh, gosh, I nev- never really felt, felt like a hero. So don't disqualify yourself because you don't feel like you're doing great exploits. Just take each day as it comes. And it'd be amazing that I believe that when we look back at the end of 2020, we'll look back at this year where we prophesied great exploits. And I think a lot of us will be surprised as we look back and go, wow, did we really do that? Absolutely. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time to be involved in this podcast today. I want to thank Pastor Glynn, of course, for being here and sharing with us. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. We love you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we love you, leaders. Thank you for being a part of this amazing church. You make it amazing. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Thanks for carrying your cross for Christ and and for making a difference in society together. Together, we can make a difference in Jesus' name. Amen.